Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today we'll be continuing from the last console input output video, and we were saying that the age input variable that is a string is being read from the console, and then after, because we want the age to be actually an integer, then we use this function called convert to in32. We pass the string variable in that we previously gained from the console, and there we go, we have the integer output. So to use this inside an if statement, we need to be able to convert the string input to an integer which we have so then instead of responding to the string we actually talk about the integer so we change that to age and now the statement executes correctly so the structure of the if statement is you have the word if followed by a space and between the two parentheses you need to have a condition and these conditions need to evaluate to true or to false and we can have things like equal to not equal to greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, and these are the main ones that we'll be using. And then if you want to chain multiple uh, conditions inside the if statement, you can use things like and and or, but we'll get to them later on. So just for the time being, we can say that if the age is less than 18, we can print out a variable saying you are less than 18 years old. So then, if we wanted to print multiple, we could say if age is greater than 20, we open the curly braces, you, you are older, 20 years old, which is perfect. Now if we try and run the line of code, it says what is your name, Abba, what is your age, 23, and now it says you are older than 20 years old, which is great. But what's happening here when we have two if statements is it's always checking this one and then it's checking this one after. Whereas what we want to happen is if we change this to an else if, it only checks this one if this one returns false, which means that if we run the code and we type in a number that's less than 18, like 17, and it says this, which is the first branch, then the line of code will be checked here, and then when this returns true, it will execute the lines inside the curly braces, and instead of checking this one, it'll jump straight to this console read line. And the reason for that is because we've changed it with ifs and else ifs. We know that if we're only gonna have to print one of these options, then there is no point in letting the code check for both options when we're only ever gonna use one of them. So then we can chain even more, and we can say else if, age is greater than 30 and then we can add this line of code in and that seems like it would work but now the problem is is if you do type a number like 30 then it's going to come into here and this one's going to return false and this one's also going to return true and that's the problem because we want to be able to access this message from inside this message so what we can do instead, like we talked about before, we could use the AND operator and we can say else if the age is greater than 20 and age is less than 30. And then we can change a message saying you are between 20 and 30 years old. And if we run this code now, we could say ABBA 25 and it says you are between 20 and 30 years old. And if we run it again, and we type 35, it says you're older than 30 years old, which is perfect. I hope this made sense, so just a quick recap. We use if and else ifs to make sure that we only fall onto one of these paths, and if we use one of these paths, then the others don't get checked, so it makes our program a little bit more efficient. If we want to print all three, and we know that the conditions are going to be separate, then we can remove the else's and let the program check all three conditions separately. But in this case, because it's only dependent on one variable, we only want them to be able to print one line of these and then get to the console read line. So I'm finished with this example. Let's move on to the next one. I've just made a new project and let's get started on the next example. So I'm going to make two number variables, number A and number B. And we could say, console.write please enter the first number and then what we can do is we can take a string number a input equals console the read line and then we can take number a and we can say convert to in32 
and then we can take the number A input, that will give us our first number, and the same thing, and we can say, please enter the second number. Do the same thing for number B. So now we have both of our integers stored. First we declare the two variables, number A and number B, and then we ask the user to enter the first number, and we use the write so the input can be followed after this colon. We read it in from the console, and then they get stored into the number A input, and then we use convert in 32 to convert it from a string back to an integer, and the same thing for number B. So then what we can do is we can say int answer equals number A multiplied by number B, and this will give us our multiplication. So what we can say is we can ask the user now, we could say console write, what is the value of number A plus, and then a space, number B multiplied. So again, as we covered in the vi previous video, we can use static strings and we can add variables to them. And here we're saying what is the value of then place number A and number B multiplied. So then we can use our answer input equals console.readline int actual answer equals the convert to int32 of the answer input and we can take that value and now we can do a comparison between the actual answer that the user's given us and the answer that it actually is so we can say if the answer equals equals the actual answer then we can say console dot right line well well done you got it correct and then here we could say else. Now notice here that we have a generic else word, and this means if this doesn't pass, then this will always execute. So this isn't dependent on a condition. The only thing it depends on is if this statement becomes false, this will always execute. So we're just saying here, if they got the answer correct, we can print this. And if they didn't correct, get it correct, there's no point in saying actual answer. Uh, although this would work and this makes sense, but this is an unusual amount of code that we don't need to include because this will either ever be true or false. And if this happens, then this won't happen. And if this doesn't happen, then this will happen. So we can just leave this as else. And we can say, close, but it was wrong. So now if we just test our program, please enter your first number, two, two, Please enter the 2 to multiply it. Oh, well done, you got it correct. And we can see there was some formatting errors, so we could put a colon there and a space just to make it easier for the user to type in. Please enter the first number, 5, 5. And if we just put a random number in, I can say close, but it's wrong. So what we have is two integer variables, pull their inputs in, pull the second input in, multiply the answer to make sure we've got an answer stored, ask for the answer from the user, and then we're using if statements to be able to compare the answer with the actual answer that they've put it in. Then we use console write line to let the user know what the result of the question is. Hope that made sense. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.